Hello there, my name is Kevin Kors and I am the UF IFAS Extension Agent for Alachua County, focusing on row crops. Today we're going to take a look at some common diseases of corn and what we can do to manage them in your fields if you happen to have them. We have had actually a pretty heavy infestation of southern rust this year. However, the good side of this is that it didn't come in until later on in the season. So. If we take a look at this plant here, we see some pretty typical southern rust lesions. This particular plant was a susceptible variety and we have a heavy enough infection that you're seeing symptoms appear on the leaf sheath as well as on the leaf. So what are the symptoms? For southern rust, we have these erumpent lesions. Erumpent means that they're actually coming up out of the leaf surface. So if you run your finger over it, it's kind of like braille. Southern rust can be distinguished from common rust which usually doesn't require any kind of treatment by the expression of its lesions. Southern rust will appear both on the bottom and the top side of the leaf and typically has more of an orange or rusty color to it. Common rust lesions typically only appear on the top side of the leaf or the upper leaf surface and have quite a bit darker color to it. It's almost a dark brown color. However, Diseases can look different depending on which variety they are on. So if you have something that you suspect as southern rust, it is recommended that you submit it to a plant diagnostic clinic or call your local extension agent to confirm. Common rust does not require a treatment, southern rust can. So how do we decide when it's warranted to apply a fungicide to treat southern rust in corn? What we do is we go and scout our fields right at vegetative tassel. So right when this corn plant is putting out its male flowers on top, we wanna to go through that field and identify what's called the ear leaf. So that is the leaf that is directly below where the corn ear is gonna set. If we look at that leaf and we see that about 5% of that leaf is covered in southern rust lesions, then that's our trigger that we may need to go out there with a fungicide. If we have lesions that are 5% of the leaf, but it's on one leaf or two leaves below that ear leaf, a fungicide application is actually not warranted. You may wanna go out there and continue to scout your fields as the disease can progress pretty quickly up the plant. But again, that threshold is dependent on where the ear leaf is when we're at vegetative tassel. And if you have 5% of that ear leaf covered in lesion, then it may be a good idea to go out there with a fungicide and treat. Another point um, to notice too, is that when you do have levels of infection of southern rust that are this heavy, it can severely reduce the photosynthetic capability of this plant, which will reduce the integrity of the stalk. So in fields that are heavily infested with southern rust, you may see some late season lodging as well. The next disease I want to talk about is something called northern corn leaf blight. We can see northern corn leaf blight on this leaf, and while there are many different lesions on this leaf, the northern corn leaf blight actually sticks out. It's the longer cigar-shaped lesions, and you can see that there are several of those on this leaf. So northern corn leaf blight is really common down here in the south, even though it's called northern corn leaf blight. This is what's called a residue-borne fungal disease. That means it survives our winters in corn residue in the field. So one of the best management recommendations we have for fields that have a history of northern corn leaf blight is simple tillage. If we can introduce that corn residue into the soil, it'll help break down these pathogens. They can't outcompete the other microorganisms in the soil and thus they die. The best control method for northern corn leaf blight is just planting a variety that shows a really good resistance. And most of the seeds that you'll get from most of our seed companies have a really good um, disease rating for their seeds. And so find something that's really good against northern corn leaf blight and that will be your best bet. Now, if it is to the point where you have high enough infections in your field that you think you need a fungicide treatment, we use the same threshold that we use for southern corn leaf blight and southern corn rust. If we see that 5% of the ear leaf is covered in lesion, 5% or more of that ear leaf or any leaf above that ear leaf, that's our treatment threshold. Scout regularly, look for these lesions. If at vegetative tassel on the ear leaf, you have 5% of the leaf covered in lesion, that's our treatment threshold. But now I'd like to talk about stock rot in corn. Now there are many different pathogens that will cause a stock rot. And what you'll notice is what we call flagging, where you'll look out into your cornfield and you'll notice 
one or two or, or, or several plants that are completely brown and desiccated or dried up a lot earlier than the rest of your field. This is a good indication that we have something going on inside that stock or possibly even in the root system. So we actually have a twofer with this particular sample. When I dug the plant up, I noticed some very red discoloration of the roots. And that red coloring is always a very good indication of the presence of a fungus called fusarium. So there is some fusarium root rot going on with this particular plant. Now that root rot can actually turn into a stock rot. And when you cut open that stock, you'll find some pink discoloration in there as well. Well, I cut open this stock and what I found was that we actually have a bacterial stock rot going on. And bacterial stock rot can be identified by when you split that crown of the plant open, what you'll notice is first of all, there's a stench. It's a bacterium and it's breaking down that plant material and it actually releases some nasty smells. And then you'll notice too that all of the plant is really dry except down in that crown. It's still really soggy and wet. So that's a very good indication that there's a bacterium working its way up this stalk and causing a rot. What you'll notice is that you'll see these thin strands. It'll actually turn the interior of that crown in um, kind of a ropey texture. It'll be wet or water soaked and it'll have a really unpleasant odor. And that's a good indication of bacterial stalk rot. Now, both of these diseases are residue borne. So again, they're gonna survive in that plant residue on the cornfield. So tillage is a great management strategy for this particular disease as it incorporates that plant material into the soil and eventually dies because it can't outpeat the other microbes in the soil. Plant resistance is our number one strategy against plant diseases. Now it's really important to remember that you cannot start the correct management process without coming up first with the correct diagnosis. So if there is any doubt as to which disease you may have in your field, remember to contact your local extension agent and they can help you come up with an accurate and timely diagnosis.